Keaton Slovis's journey to BYU is far from a simple one. The once under the radar college prospect has found himself suiting up for two previous Power 5 teams, and the injury bug has derailed his career. Slovis was once viewed as the best quarterback in the 2022 NFL Draft class by ESPN and is still held in high regard by many NFL scouts, even with his struggles. Slovis will now look to revive his career at BYU this season and lead them to a strong first year in the Big 12. But how do we get here? You won't want to miss this one. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm planning to release a video every day for the month of August. Also, comment who you want me to cover in future videos and who your favorite players from the 2023 college football season are. Keaton Slovis grew up in Scottsdale, Arizona, a state that in recent years has become a hotbed for Division I quarterbacks. Slovis recalled back to high school telling The Athletic, I remember hearing all these other names that were getting recruited in my class when they were freshmen or sophomores. A kid like Spencer Rattler, who was in my area, was a five-star and he started as a freshman. Slovis would not have the same type of starting success as Rattler, but that did not stop him from believing he was a high-level quarterback. Slovis would attend Desert Mountain High School, where he would be mentored and coached by former NFL quarterback Kurt Warner, who served as his quarterback coach. Desert Mountain was not the most successful high school program while Slovis was there, according to The Athletic, and Slovis would not take over the starting quarterback job until his junior year. During his junior year, though, in 2017, Slovis threw for 2,987 yards, 32 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions. Slovis would be named an All-State Honorable Mention. As a senior, Slovis threw for 2,543 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions. Slovis was named to the Prep Star All-Western Region Team and All-State Honorable Mention again while also being named All-Academic Honorable Mention by Sports 360 AZ. According to 24-7 Sports Composite, Keaton Slovis was a 3-star recruit who was the 26th best pro-style quarterback and 705th best player in his class. He only received 8 Division I offers from the likes of Hawaii, NC State, Oregon State, SMU, and USC. Now, Slovis's recruiting story is a very interesting one. Nick Rolovich was the head coach at Hawaii from 2016 to 2019. He usually liked to try to see players in person before he offered them, but due to where he was located, that was not always possible. He decided to watch Slovis's tape and loved it so much he decided to offer the Arizona native. Olovich told The Athletic, Keenan was one that the film, the motion, the quick release, everything, I love the long athlete. There were so many things that checked the boxes off the film. And he played for a Hall of Fame quarterback, Kurt Warner, in high school. And you assume he has a preparation level to be able to contribute early. And Kurt reiterated that to us. Olovich decided to offer Slovis in March of 2018, becoming his first scholarship offer. For a quarterback with FBS potential, this was extremely late into the recruiting process. But like I mentioned before, Slovis's high school was not the strongest program. Wolovich called Slovis and told him, Hey, we really like you and want to watch you throw, but we think you're one of the best quarterbacks on the West Coast. We want to offer you early. Slovis spoke on the situation saying, That kind of came out of nowhere because I just started talking to them that week and they offered me. After his junior year, Slovis had sent his film out to multiple schools and recruiting coordinators through direct messages. New Mexico State offered Slovis shortly after Hawaii, and SMU offered in May. Slovis secured his first Power 5 offer when NC State offered him. Slovis had developed a relationship with Eli Drinkwitz, who was the offensive coordinator for the Wolfpack at the time. Slovis told The Athletic, Of all the people who recruited me, I really enjoyed talking to him. He's a pretty funny guy, actually. He would call quite often and send me stuff and film they were doing. It was pretty cool to have the interactions because I hadn't really been recruited before, and even when I had, it was very minimal from coaches. The thing I really appreciated about him when he recruited me, I don't like being courted in a way. I don't like when the coaches tell you how good you are, any of that. I kind of like talking to a coach and seeing what they like to do offensively. It surprised Slovis when the Wolfpack started recruiting him after the way Arizona and Arizona State treated him. Arizona never showed any interest, but Arizona State, which was 20 minutes away from where he grew up, did not show him much attention until they lost a recruit to BYU. Ironically, right? Slovis had a chip on his shoulder, and instead, Arizona State landed Jaden Daniels. In May of 2018, then-USC quarterback coach Brian Ellis came to visit Slovis. He asked Slovis how he would feel if USC offered him to come play for them. Would he consider committing? 
Slovis told him he'd seriously consider them due to the fact that they would be the best opportunity. Slovis told The Athletic, So I guess he called my dad next and told him he was going to offer me. Again, nobody told me, and at lunchtime he told me to give him a call, and that's when he offered me. So at lunchtime on the same day, at school, he offered me from throwing with me that morning. It was pretty crazy. Slovis was offered on Monday and took a visit to USC and was committed by that Friday, announcing it that Saturday. Slovis spoke on the commitment saying, I was probably the least touted USC quarterback commit in recent history. But that is not where the story ends. Things got interesting for Slovis. JT Daniels took over the starting quarterback spot in 2018, with five-star prospect from the 2020 class Bryce Young committed to USC. Those two seemed to be the future for the Trojans. On top of that, then-offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury tried to recruit Dylan Gabriel, who was ranked one spot behind Slovis in the 24-7 sports composite rankings for pro-style quarterbacks. Still, Slovis remained committed to the Trojans, believing in himself and also feeling like he really did not have any other options. No one really expected Slovis to get any playing time his freshman year, especially since the Trojans already had sophomore quarterback JT Daniels on the roster. Then JT Daniels tore his ACL during the season opener. Slovis was thrown into the starting role. His first start, Slovis threw for 377 yards and three touchdowns, completing 84.8% of his passes against Stanford all of which were freshman records in a debut. Slovis would suffer a concussion against Utah and miss the Washington game before returning against Notre Dame. Against Colorado, Slovis threw for 406 yards, four touchdowns, and one interception. In a three-game span against Arizona State, California, and UCLA, Slovis threw for 432 yards, four touchdowns, and an interception, 406 yards, and four touchdowns, and 515 yards, and four touchdowns. During that three-game time span, he completed an average of 78.6% of his passes. Slovis finished his true freshman year throwing for 3,502 yards, 30 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. After the season, Jack Sears and JT Daniels, who were both 4- and 5-star prospects respectively, decided to both enter the transfer portal, basically telling the world Slovis was the Trojans' guy. During the USC's bowl game, Slovis would suffer a strained elbow, which caused him to spend the first few weeks of 2020 resting his arm. He was not 100% until March, and he planned to work with quarterback coaches to fix up the fundamental things, but then the pandemic threw everything out the window. USC did not return to practice until October, and Slovis struggled to throw a spiral early in the season. He was able to hide it in the opener against Arizona State, especially after making a throw to Drake London that won the game, but things became obvious against Arizona. Everybody had their own theories at the time. Slovis talked to The Athletic about a time he hurt his elbow in 8th grade and missed the first game of the season. When he came back, he wasn't throwing right, and his coaches told him, Keaton, you're healthy now. You gotta let it rip. Slovis hadn't realized he wasn't letting it rip. He relates the arm injury to that and arm fatigue. He told The Athletic, it was more so I got hurt. I tried to change a few things I was doing to be more efficient, but I was teaching myself and creating a lot of bad habits doing that. Did my arm feel better last year? Yeah, it did. But did that mean I threw the ball better? No, it didn't. Did it help with my confidence? No. Was I less accurate? 100%. Although Slovis wasn't his best in 2020, he still stepped up when his team needed him with numerous comebacks. USC would go on to lose in the Pac-12 championship to Oregon, and Slovis finished the season throwing for 1,921 yards, 17 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions in 6 games. During USC's pro day, Slovis was throwing for some USC wide receivers, and he seemed to be throwing better again. Though he felt like he saw improvement after fully recovering, Slovis still struggled in 2021, throwing for 2,153 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions, leading USC to a 4-5 record as a starter. Jackson Dart would see significant playing time towards the end of the season, and head coach Clay Helton was fired. With the arrival of Lincoln Riley and the way the transfer portal is nowadays, it also meant the arrival of future first-round pick Caleb Williams from Oklahoma. Slovis saw the writing on the wall and would enter the transfer portal himself. It was a tough and emotional decision for Slovis, who released a statement saying, I won't lie, I thought we would continue that success throughout my career. But football is kind of like life. You can't control everything. Whether it's injuries or having to navigate a season with COVID and so many unknowns, some things you just don't plan for. And everything didn't go as I planned during the rest of my time at USC. USC will always be a special place to me. Now it's time for me to start a new chapter. With Pittsburgh coming off an amazing season that saw them win the ACC championship, led by quarterback Kenny Pickett, Slovis jumped up to the opportunity to become a Panther. He told the Player Tribune, I was so excited when Coach Narduzzi called, because I knew that Pitt and this program were the right fit for me to keep developing into the best leader I can be. 
I'm ready to win now. I'm feeling incredibly grateful for the opportunity to be a Panther. I can't wait to prove myself again on this stage. Things seemed almost poetic when Pitt opened up the season against West Virginia in the backyard brawl, who was now led by quarterback JT Daniels. Slovis and Pitt would beat West Virginia 38-31 to start the season off the right way. But other than a 305-yard passing game against Georgia Tech, a game Pitt would lose, Slovis would struggle throughout the season and would not throw for more than 250 yards until the Miami game and the regular season finale. He finished the 2022 season throwing for 2,397 yards, 10 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, and before the Sun Bowl, announced that he would be transferring from Pitt for his final year of eligibility. Things had changed at Pitt between the time period he transferred and when he started his first game against West Virginia. Offensive coordinator Mark Whipple left for Nebraska and was ultimately replaced by Frank Signetti Jr., whose offense averaged 10 fewer pass attempts per game than the 40 tosses every contest under Whipple, and Blitnikoff award-winning wide receiver Jordan Addison had bolted to USC. Slovis was almost set up to fail a bit, some may say. He also battled injuries throughout the season going back to the Panthers' Week 2 matchup against Tennessee. Some felt he may return home to one of the Arizona schools, or go to TCU or Kentucky were replacing NFL draft quarterbacks. Instead, Slovis chose to attend BYU, a school that had recently seen Jaron Hall and Zach Wilson drafted. BYU was intrigued by Slovis's accuracy in the past and his experience having played in the Pac-12 and ACC as they adjusted to the Big 12 play. BYU offense coordinator Aaron Roderick told KSL.com, Keaton is an effortless passer, great leader and one of the most accurate quarterbacks in college football. I've enjoyed watching his calm demeanor. He's always poised, never too high or too low. I have been so impressed with his methodical approach at this decision to come to BYU. I can't wait for him to join us in January. Reese's Senior Bowl director Jim Nagy believes that Slovis is one of the most naturally accurate quarterbacks in the 2024 class as he loves his ball placement and mid-range throws that are so critical in the pro game. Slovis is impressed so far and has won the starting quarterback job heading into the 2023 college football season. He loves BYU so far, telling Fox Sports, there's a certain energy here. Like, I don't know if it's happy-go-lucky or just constant optimism. Guys take so much pride in the why and have so much confidence in themselves, in their teammates around them, it's almost like a brotherhood that's a tight-knit circle. And within that circle, that's a belief that I haven't really been around. When he trots out on the field against Sam Houston State on September 2nd, it's also believed that Slovis will become just the second-ever quarterback to start for BYU, after previously making a start under center at another FBS school. Though his numbers may have regressed over the past few seasons, Slovis was viewed as an NFL caliber quarterback after last season, but wanted to end his college career on a high note. Slovis will look to have a special season at BYU, and if he does, he could find himself hearing his name called come next spring at the 2024 NFL Draft. What do you think? How well will Keaton Slovis play at BYU, and can he be one of the NFL's top quarterback prospects next season? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.